Hello and welcome to the interior of the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Let's face it, Rolls-Royce has never been associated with taking your car through the desert, driving it across fields. You've never really envisaged taking your Rolls-Royce to even follow the British rally in the middle of winter, getting it covered in dirt. Before we get going and really settle into the juicy bits, whenever I'm in a really significant car, I like to set the context as to why it is significant. And of all of the artisan mastery and smatterings of luxury within this vast cave of opulence, I think the thing that summarizes this car the most is in fact perhaps the name. So here we go. So the name Cullinan was given to the world's largest flawless diamond ever found. So it's a pretty significant terminology to begin with. And more important than that, that diamond found its way into the crown jewels of Queen Elizabeth, where it still resides today. So I would say that this is the crowning jewel of Rolls-Royce, but in fact, the flagships is still the Phantom 8. However, this car, I think, is the car that's going to change the face of Rolls-Royce forever. I've spent about an hour with the car before I decided to talk about it. There's some features in the boot, which we'll get to shortly. Please stick around for that, because the creations that are going to be coming out of Rolls-Royce, the fit in the boot of this car is going to be unlike anything you have ever seen. There's an optional extra in the boot of this, which I shall share with you shortly, which is about as cool an accessory as I've seen in a car so far, but we'll get on to dreaming up what other potential opportunities there might be shortly. So, so let's talk about the powertrain before we talk about what it's like to be inside. So the engine is the transplant from the Phantom 8. It's the 6.75 litre V12. Now, there is actually 50 newton metres less of torque, but it's also running 563 brake horsepower. Absolutely no slouch, and the torque is still vast at... 850 newton meters yes this is going to have plenty of uh, twisting effort to pull you out of any sticky situations and that is of course the breadth of ability that this car now has it is undoubtedly going to cruise as well as your phantom or your dawn but of course if you fancy uh, taking the road less traveled or should i say the field or the ski slope or the desert less traveled that's what this car is now all about. We've seen that Rolls-Royce has always been associated with a plethora of different lifestyles, but it's never been associated with the locations that this car now unlocks. And to have that on a platform that supports the luxurious architecture synonymous with Rolls-Royce is bringing an entirely different dynamic to the SUV world. One of the things that's happening right now in this space, and I totally get why, but there's a lot of sort of part sharing and chassis sharing. And when you step into some cars from the SUV world, you're aware that, okay, I'm in this mark, but I can tell that it's sharing DNA of something else that's familiar. And it might not always have the same prestige of the car that you're hopping into. This is strictly Rolls Royce through and through clean sheet of paper up, they have gone to town and injected 100% Rolls-Royce DNA into the Cullinan experience. And as a result, I mean, where do you go from here? Nobody does luxury on wheels like Rolls-Royce. And now it's an SUV. So this is now the second car to sit on Rolls-Royce's architecture of luxury. This is their new platform of which they're going to build on for future models. The result is that rather than developing new chassis for every different car, vast amounts of R&D have gone into one platform, which they then build new cars on top of. The benefit of that is all of the R&D has gone into one thing, making it a sublime platform to build on. I drove the Phantom 8 towards the end of last year. That was the first car built on the new architecture of luxury. And believe me, next level doesn't do that thing justice. I've never experienced a car which has that scale, that weight and those dynamics in one package. So there will be two versions of this car offered initially. And that is this one we're sat in right now, which 
I guess is most identified as, I guess, the more practical version because it doesn't have the typical segregated passenger zones in the rear with the long central tunnel or console for all of your gadgetry and luxuries and champagne flutes, etc. What this is, is the first truly practical Rolls Royce. It has the more, I think the word bench setup doesn't really do it justice, but it is sort of one large bench seat at the back. It's the kind of car that, yes, it's smattered with luxury, but you really don't mind throwing your bags in the back. And I think the subtle differences of having a seat layout like this versus that more limousine chauffeur driven vibe in the back where both passengers are separated by this luxurious tunnel has the mindset and approach change of saying, yes, this is now a proper dailyable practical car. And I did mention there's two versions. So of course that option where you can have separated passengers with luxury tunnel in the middle will be available. We'll see that after the uh, launch, but it's really cool to know that these guys are taking the practical element of it quite seriously and that it's not just a phantom on stilts. Now, Rolls-Royce are saying that this is the first of its kind because in the design language, in the design world of SUVs, uh, you normally have what is known as a two-box car. And what they mean by that is you have the engine space, which is the long bonnet section at the front up to the front wheels, which is the first box. And then the second box is this environment we're in right here. Rolls-Royce though, however, have said they have introduced the third box. Now, by convention, I would say boot spaces are pretty boring things. It's like, yes, it's got a boot, you throw some bags in it, get on with life. I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is boot space redefined. Before I show you, I want to set a bit more context as to where Rolls-Royce are going with things right now. If you watched my Phantom 8 video, if you didn't, link below, there is a gallery, like a literally an art gallery, which has been inserted into three quarters of the dashboard. The idea is that instead of just having a sort of plain face shirt, a plain dash, which might, which might otherwise just have an air vent and a clock on it, Rolls-Royce are the first people in the world to install a hermetically sealed art installation, meaning you can literally put a piece of art inside your dashboard. Rolls-Royce themselves offer standard art installations from the factory, but you can ultimately customize the dashboard to have anything you want in it, really. I would say they've gone and taken this to an entirely different level with the options you can have in the boot. Let's check it out. Okay, so. Seamlessly normal boot, granted, but it is what is inside that is quite incredible. Check Look at the articulation. Behold, the most beautiful viewing platform ever to grace the rear of a car. Look at this thing. It's like Bang & Olufsen made seats. It's just incredible. Let me show you the details. Okay, so I know I just showed you how these opened, but these are the seats as they appear out of this enclosed area here. They slide out and they sort of rotate outwards as it comes out of here, and then you have two seats, like so. And then say you're out, uh, I don't know, watching your family skiing or uh, watching the horse racing, the point to point maybe, or a bit of grouse or whatever it is. And it doesn't stop there. So this uh, little panel here, look, if I press on that, it then pops out as a table, no less. You can sit here, drinks or whatever it is, and just survey the land. And then with one button, Ciao for now. It's incredible. Now imagine the opportunities that you can create to go in the back of your Cullinan. So right now this is, it's an optional extra, but it's something that Rolls-Royce just offer. The idea is, and as I was talking inside the car, that just like the 
gallery in Phantom 8, this is an opportunity to customize and bespoke your car to your lifestyle. So whatever you're interested in, if you can dream it, these guys can probably create it. And just like the gallery in the Phantom 8, I'm sure as time goes on, we'll see snippets of incredible things which people have dreamt up. But this is an entirely different ball game because look at the space you've got. It's crackers. Yeah, so that's pretty incredible. Uh, that's just one option which will be available from the options list. You can just say, I would like these fold out seats slash a viewing platform and it will be tailored to match your car. The idea is though, not to think of the boot as a boot. It's to think of it as a space to be customized to your interests. So say you're a photographer and you have a lot of gear, perhaps Rolls-Royce can create for you a bespoke section, a folding out cabinet of all of your accessories and drone parts or whatever you want. You can think of this for anything. Think of a hobby and think of a way of applying a bespoke creation inside the boot that is going to enhance the experience of that hobby and sort of fit it and tailor it more to your lifestyle, to that quality. It's so cool. Rolls-Royce are very private about what their clients do. They hint and nod to me about, when I talk to them about this, they're like, you have no idea. They're like, the requests that we have already for the things to go in that boot, you just you would have to be in a different world to even begin to dream up these things. So hopefully, as these cars roll out, we'll be able to see more and more of these options. But as you can tell, that's a standard option. So imagine the bespoke stuff you can create. Nuts. Also part of the Rolls-Royce ethos, I guess, is effortlessness. It is a seamless integration of everything, be it luxury or interaction, driving ability, whatever it is, the whole purpose of it is to be an effortless gliding experience. This has been carried through into the all-wheel drive system, as opposed to other 4x4s where you have options to tweak and change and calibrate the 4x4 options, depending on what kind of terrain you're on, this is just designed to just do it. <laughs> like you will hit whatever terrain you're on, the system will work it out and optimize it for you. So you don't have to faff around and try and set up anything that's going to optimize the car to the surroundings you're in. It will do it for you. So you just get on with life. And like Phantom, it also shares the flag bearer system. Now, if you haven't heard about this, um, it is a system which through cameras in the car and the aid of satellite GPS, reads and predicts the road in front of you. So when you're driving along, it will adjust the car and the ride quality to anticipate uh, changes in undulation and bumps and things like that. I've experienced this in Phantom, it's otherworldly. Rolls-Royce related to the magic carpet ride, and I think that's just the best way of explaining it. It's also like genie in a bottle technology, I, I, I mean, what on earth? It scans the road, talks with GPS, and in real time adjusts the ride quality so that you iron out bumps. Yeah. <laughs> These are the things you're getting in a car like this. It's not just luxury, it's full of cool tech. I just can't wait to drive it. So I think in conclusion, the defining statement I would make about this car is that it is the ultimate in Rolls-Royce lifestyle, really. There's never been a Rolls-Royce that has ticked so many boxes. And I honestly don't think there has ever been a Rolls-Royce that will appeal to so many people. This is your do-it-all car. All of a sudden, this opens a completely different world. It's the kids to school. It's the towing the car to the racetrack. It's the go shooting, go skiing, go in the desert, do it all Rolls-Royce. That has to be a game changer. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.